to the word this morning. Oh, let's, let's praise the Lord together today. Let's thank him for his presence, his anointing, his gifting, his presence, his release to us and through us in Jesus' name. Oh, give yourself a hug, will you? Just go ahead and give yourself a hug. You're so precious. Please be seated. And I'm so delighted to be here today. Uh, it's a treat to be back in the, to speak to you today. Yeah, you know, a, a father needs to come home and talk to his children every now and then, don't you think? I, I know I feel that way. I feel like a father of the house, and maybe it's because I'm just older or maybe because I've been around a long time, but whatever it is, I'll take it, <laughs> and I'm glad for it. But uh, I'm so delighted, like I say, to be in the, here this morning, and I just want to know and thank Dr. Hope. How many of you enjoyed Dr. Hope last week? Amen. We are so blessed to have gifted people in this house. Teach, pray, prophesy, heal, deliver, cast out demons, pray for healing, and it happens. Prophets, apostles, pastors, evangelists, teachers, all in the house of the Life Center, and we're thankful for it. You know, you spend years raising up the saints to do the work of the ministry, and they do it. And I'm thankful today to be here to, to just uh, applaud each of you for your gifting and using and training that you've received. And I believe and I hear testimony to the fact that you are releasing it to them in the marketplace, and I thank God for that. One of the things that's on my heart today is the fact that I'm talking about gratitude. I love to come and praise the Lord because I'm grateful for the Lord. How many of you are grateful for the Lord Jesus Christ and for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Well, I'm grateful today, and there is what I call the principle of gratitude. The principle of gratitude. You know, if you read and or recite the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, his kingdom. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, so it shall be on earth. So it tells us very clearly that he is a source. He is our heavenly Father, but more than that, he's the source of all things. Things come from the spiritual to the physical. They first are in the mind of the Lord and then they become manifested on earth. And most of the things today come manifested on the earth through us, through our words, through the actions that we deed. So if we, if we know all things come on from the Father to earth, from heaven, then we need to learn to live in a heavenly culture. You know, we don't... Paul said we are citizens of heaven and our citizenship is there now. We're not in a hurry to get there, I don't guess, but when we do, we'll be glad that we prepared, that he prepared the way and we took advantage of it. But, you know, if we want to get from the source to the earth, the things that we need, as the prophecy came forth this morning, it's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. As you, you see, it comes from the spirit to the mind to the mouth. And as we speak it, it releases it to come and be manifested into our presence. So when we don't talk, when we don't shout it, when we don't declare it, the Lord, we're not releasing it. So, you know, that's our job. But if one of the things that we are to do is to operate in God's principles. Now, more than anything else, that's what I preach. I believe it is so. If we learn his principles that, that Jesus taught us, then we can operate from heaven to earth. All of the sourcing is there, but I want to be able to apprehend it, don't you? You want to be able to say, Lord, I need or I want and I, I need it here on earth because I know it's in heaven and he will bring it there. Now, if you think about it, we have a legacy, all of us, to leave. Our legacy is built on two things, people and principles. We learn his principles in order to uh, use them with the people, his people, all people. Jesus came and taught us everything we would need to know about the principles and how to interact with people. So it would be a good thing to know that. But just think, that is your legacy. One day you will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ how you used his principle to reach people. You don't believe me? You do believe me. You're thinking about it. 
What can I do to convince you? <laughs> no, your legacy is people. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whosoever, we're, the, we're to bring about the whosoever's. So if it's about people and I need to reach people and I need resources, then I need to understand his principles and to use those principles. But anyway, we're all kingdom living. We're all victorious living. We live kingdom living. We want to live victorious. Well, when we talk about principles, there are many principles in the Word of God. Jesus taught us those. That was the way he started off his ministry with what we call the Beatitudes. These are the attitudes which release to us his principle. And he taught us all of that. He talked about planting and sowing, or sowing and reaping, didn't he? And sowing and reaping, once we start using that principle, it's called the principle of stewardship. But, you know, it's a hard thing, but whatsoever you sow, you're going to reap. So it would make sense to reap with good, sow with good seed to reap with good seed. And that's a principle. It's a very strong principle of the, of the Lord. He taught us about servanthood or serving. And he said if we learn to serve or to be disciples, and we're going to be teaching how to have disciples, elder, uh, the elders are going to be teaching that. And so that will be coming, and we want to take advantage of that. But do you realize that when you learn to serve, you increase your capacity? You feel restricted or confined and limited. Well, if you'll start serving, the Lord will open it up and give you greater capacity. It's a principle, church. I didn't create it. I'm just expounding to you what Jesus taught us. It's a principle. He said that we, we know that. And then there's the, he, he taught us that giving is a principle, right? And if we give as a principle, it breaks scarcity. Give what, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, running over. Give, and then it will be given. So it would make sense. If I give, I'm going to receive, because why? It's a principle. Believe me, we were in a plane this week, and we were depending on the law of aerodynamics. Then we didn't to overcome the, the law of gravity. It's a principle of God, just as much so as the principle of giving. So give and it shall be given. So if you want to break the restrictions in your life, start serving. If you want to, if you want to plant good seed, you're going to reap good harvest. If you, uh, if you give, it shall be given unto you. And then we don't want to forget forgiving is a principle. If we want to receive forgiveness, we must forgive. Give and it shall be, you know, it says toward in John 1, 9, 1 John 1, 9, for if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to what? Forgive us of our sin. I want to be sin forgiven. I don't want my sins hanging around. I like for them to get out of here and be gone. But I must confess those sins for that to happen. And so we know that even Jesus said it. If you say unto the mountain, you know, anything, be thou removed, it shall be removed unless there's unforgiveness. So he's saying if you want to expand your limits, then learn to be one who is forgiving and he shall forgive us. And then we know there's a principle of generosity. And generosity just opens the floodgates. That's all I can tell you about it. We have a generous God. When I understood that our Heavenly Father was a generous Father, it changed my life. I always thought he was somebody who was about ready to correct me, you know, like my father used to do. Pound me on the head if it took it, whatever it took, correct me. And then I found out he is generous with his love. He's generous with all that he has, and he wants to release it to us. So if you are generous, then you will receive from heaven. Heaven will come to earth for you. And then there's faithful, oh my goodness, loyalty comes out of faithfulness. If you want people to be loyal to you, you must be faithful. And it builds faith. If you want to be full of faith, be faithful. It removes mountains. If you have faith as a mustard seed, if you have any kind of faith at all, it will make room for you. But then I want to talk to you about the principle of gratitude. Gratitude is another word is being thankful, isn't it? Being appreciative, really appreciating what you want. But you know what gratitude brings is joy, peace, and abundance. Wow. Boy, that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Gratitude.
Gratitude brings joy, peace, abundance. When you're grateful for what you have, you will allow you to have more. God cannot, he's restricted by an ungrateful heart. If you have a grateful heart, it is just like a bucket that he can pour into. The more you're grateful, the more he releases to you. So we have to give thanks for what we have and he desires to give us more. But the most important thing he can give you is joy. Amen. Joy and peace. I love peace, don't you? I love being at peace. I, I love the joy of the Lord. I, I don't like, I hate depression, don't you? I just hate depression. Anybody's depressed, I want to just come against the enemy and get him out of there. I just don't like depression. And, and it, it's not fair. It's not right when we have a God that we serve that wants to impart to us joy. Well, this past week, we had the opportunity to spend a week with the Board of Governors with Christian International and with Bishop Hammond, and it was great fellowship. Unfortunately, Dr. Mary uh, contacted something, and she's been hacking and coughing for days. And, you know, I, I, what can I do? I pray for her every day, two or three times a day, and she's going to get better. But anyway, they did, you know, it was not quite as much rest for us as we'd hoped, but that's not the point. The point is we had, we were with some great people from all around the world, Argentina, New Zealand, uh, uh, from, uh, uh, not Ghana, but where? Uh huh. That's right. <laughs> Anyway, they were from all around the world, plus all of, all of the United States and people connected with Christian International. Now, as you most of you know, we began this ministry when we were 50 years old, and I thought that, you know, I guess it's a blessing to have a second career, uh, although I didn't receive it as a blessing at the time, but I want you to know I'm full of gratitude now. Do you hear me? My heart's right. My gratitude is there. Amen. I was not grateful at the moment. Why? Because I thought I was at the place I was doing what I was supposed to do and was pleasing with God. And you know, when we think we're pleasing God, we're supposed to stay there forever. And he will up and change your assignment every time. So he changed my assignment. I was a Christian. I was a believer. I was a giver. I was a tither. I was all of those as a what we call Christian layman, but he wanted to bring us into being a reproducer of reproducers, those things that we had done. He wanted us to continue. And we know that then we've announced it, and we're going to celebrate 80 years of age and 30 years of ministry. Wow. I don't feel 80. I hope I don't look quite 80, but I'll take what I have and anyway. But it was, it was good to be there because we sold into the, we believed in that principle. We sold into the Christian International, but we sold into Bishop Hammond. We sold enough money that he could take off as a church. Now, when I'm talking about us, I'm talking about the Life Center, took an, uh, enough offering with two other churches to provide his income for a year that he could write the book, what we call the Red Book. And he wrote his three basic books. You participated. You may not have been a part of the Life Center. Some of you were. But we provided the income to allow him to do that. Now, that's a blessing, but I planted a seed, and that seed has reproduced, and I'm thankful for that. We were the first church that they raised up. Just think about that. The first church, they have over 1,000 in the United States, and now they have 4,000 internationally. But we were the very first. We sowed the seed. We planted the seed. We prayed. We gave. We put the principles to work, and we're thankful. Dr. Mary was the first ordained prophet that they had, or ordained pastor. Yeah, the first woman. What a, what a break. What a break in, in tradition. The first church, the first woman, and, the, the, and were able to sow and reap, and now they have a board of governors that we meet with from all over the world. And we're proud of the Life Center. We always, you know, stand up and brag on you because we think uh, it's a good thing. So we just, I just want you to know we believe in the principles and have used the principles and we see the growth of this organization that is now in an accelerated growth. It is not level, it's growing even greater and I'm sure it will. But this was because we have a, I, I'm grateful. 
I'm grateful to be a part. I'm grateful to have been a pioneer. I'm grateful that Dr. Mary had enough courage that when everything was coming against her as a woman prophet, that was two things that didn't exist until she told the world that it did. And today we have the prophetic and those, and we've trained up thousands, and not just a few, but a thousands, over 100,000 people we've trained to trainers that have reached the people. Now, I'm telling you the principles work. You sow, you reap, you're generous, you believe, you serve, you give what you have to do. I, I just thought my life was going to be a, uh, raised up to be a businessman that made a lot of money and was a good giver and a great giver. And I believe that is a purpose for people who are in business. If you are here and, and you, God's blessing you, know that you're a vessel. You're not the end, you're the means to the end for his end. Because everything you do on the earth will be multiplied, it'll be your legacy. You may not see it, but it will happen. And that's my point. When our time is done here, I want the Life Center to continue to flourish and go forward, and I believe it will. Because I believe it's in your heart. I believe you're, you will continue to do that. So it was a great cruise. We didn't get off the ship, and we never do, because we just don't have... The, We've been there before. Okay, let it be said that. And we've done that. And I think it's wonderful. And I'm so glad one of our board of governors did a zip line and broke their leg and broke their ankle. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a terrible thing. Uh, you know, those zip lines are not made for folks like me. <laughs> they are for some of you, but I'm not one of them. So... No, we, we, we believed in raising up the saints. It was not a one-man show where one man did it all do and was responsible. It was raise up the saints and let them carry forth all of the truth that God has provided for us and train them to do that. After we had the ministry, we began the ministry, then we started the church. You say, well, people say, your church, your ministry. We are, you, you have to, every ministry has to have a church. Every church has to have a ministry. They both go together. And the church was to take care of the people. This week I'll do a funeral for one of our members. I miss him greatly, David Hall. And uh, many of you didn't know David because he's been uh, in sick for a long time. And I just really believed that I would pray him through. And I was obviously uh, disappointed that it didn't work out that way. But I'm saying you got to, and we didn't, we have a marriage like last weekend and we getting folks married and we getting folks buried and you know you got to pray people through they get in tight spots they get in hard places they need prayer they need cuddling they need loving on that's why I love on all of y'all so much you need it all of us need it we need to know we're loved we need to know we're hugged we need to know that God through us can touch our lives and that's what we're supposed to do as a church. And yes, we have many people who are connected with us through the ministry that are not members of the church. But if you're here, you're loved and you belong here. And this is where God wants to love you through. And that's what we believe is a purpose for the church. Have families. We're going to have baby dedication. We need more babies. Okay. <laughs> that is not a prophetic word. That is... <laughs> People need caring for. They need to be taught. They need to taught the Bible. They, they need to understand. They need to know they are understood. I mean, it's part of what we do as a body. When I look at all of that and I look at the principle of gratitude and I look in, who do you think probably in the whole Bible had the most verses in Scripture on gratitude? Who do you think? Well, you'd be right if you said Apostle Paul. He wrote about it constantly. And I think that Apostle Paul said, I'm the greatest of all sinners. He said, of all the sinners, I'm the greatest. He had the most gratitude because he had been saved from all of that. And I think of how grateful. He said, in all things, give thanks. And he said, whatsoever of these things, think this way. So whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is a good report, think of that way. Think positively, he was saying. But I think he could have understood and did understand the words of amazing grace. And the man who wrote it was a man who had to be forgiven for greatness, great things that he had done that was offensive to the gospel. So we need to know that, but he was one. But he told uh, Timothy, he said, you know, in the last days, people are going to become ungrateful, lovers of their soul. They're going to become arrogant, disobedient to parents, un ungrateful. Church, let's don't be ungrateful, okay? 
Let's be grateful. Amen. Can we be grateful? Will we be grateful? Aren't we grateful? Are you grateful? Are you grateful that the Lord saved you from where you were and brought you to where you are? Are you grateful that the Lord's going to take you the rest of the way and he's not going to forget you and leave you? Aren't you grateful that you've been saved by the blood of Jesus and kept by the blood of Jesus and healed by the blood of Jesus and, wa- and carried all the way by the Jesus? I'm grateful. I'm grateful today. I'm grateful for you and thank you for praying for us and, and believing with us and, and continue years after years. And I, I tell uh, Elder, you know, Judy sometimes, I said, hi in the world, you listen to me for 30 years. She said, I still like it. <laughs> Bless her. I just love that girl. But I'm telling you, you know, the... It just it, Well, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We just are so loving. Thank you, Lord. And we know that, you know, that, that this usually the opposite way. It, it talks, did you know, somebody told me that on the Internet there's a website for complaining. And they said they went on to complain, and they found that there were so many more things they could complain about that they didn't know about. And we're educating their complaining. I've never been on that, but I've been told there is such a thing. But anyway, the, we want to praise God. We want to be grateful. The, for the praise in the word is 181 times it tells us to uh, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. 136 times it gives us quotes for thanksgiving. Give thanks. Be grateful unto the Lord. That's what it tells us. So we want to be grateful. Say, I'm grateful. Tell him, tell the Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord. For, loving me first. for loving me first. Amen. Maybe we need a pastor of gratitude. How would that be? And keep a big journal of all the things we need to be grateful for. And it would be like it says in the Bible, if all the, if the scrolls were, were, would not contain all the things that we could receive and have been blessed by the Lord. So we, that's maybe that would be good, just to have a gratitude journal so we don't forget it. It's been a, a known fact that experts who have looked into this at depth say that people who are grateful and are positive in their mouth and what they say live longer, have more joy, healthier, have healthier families, and, and they make more money. Yes, somebody said. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Come on, let's be grateful. And I hear an amen. Come on. We're grateful today. Hallelujah. You know, it's all relative, isn't it? Somebody says that they, you know, complainers and they were on a golf course and they were playing golf and one of them said, you know, well, the fairways are getting more narrow. The grass is getting rougher. The deep, the, the sand traps, they must be digging them deeper. I, they're, they're worse. And, and, you know, the greens are smaller. Everything is getting so bad. And one of the golfers in the, said, well, you got one thing. Be thankful you're on this side of the grass, right? <laughs> you can find something to have to give Thanksgiving. But I want to live longer. I want to be productive. Don't you? Don't you want to just be, be, feel good, have joy and peace? Well, how do you, you know, and uh, it said in, in 1 Samuel 12, 24, only fear the Lord and serve him with all your heart for consider all the great things that he has done for you. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. Just sit down sometimes and let your mind start thanking the Lord if you can get rid of the worry for a minute which 99% of it won't come to pass but if you can part that and if you can start getting grateful you'll find that joy coming back let me make a statement it is impossible to be a victorious Christian without gratitude it is impossible to be a victorious Christian without gratitude so we want to be a grateful people. Well, how do you have how do you have an attitude of gratitude? I got a whole lot of things not to be grateful about. How do you give thanks in all things, as Paul told us, at all times? I think that um, I think that the greatest probably principle or attribute of the Bible is hope. I study hope all the time. I think of hope. 
And this week I was just thinking about hope and, I, and, and just writing some scriptures down. But uh, the one I've never heard before that occurred to me was the fact that I think that uh, Joseph, when he said what the enemy meant, meant for bad, God used for good. And I thought, now that's a good definition of hope. Because how can I be thankful at all times and all things? How can I be thankful for sickness? You're not thankful to be sick. You're thankful that you know a healer and that you can pray for that healer and that he knows your healing. How in the world can I be thankful when I lose my job? You can't, but you can't say, I'm thankful I lost my job. You can say, I'm thankful I have a resource in heaven, the source of all good and perfect gifts, and my God shall I'll supply all my needs in Christ Jesus. That's how you can be thankful. You can be thankful that you have that again in heaven that will manifest on earth. It's all up there. That new job is up there, but I must start giving thanks. How can I have a uh, be thankful when a relationship that I tried everything I could to help it continue? You can't. That's not something you're thankful for, but you're thankful for this, Lord. Your peace shall come over me. Your wisdom, your discernment, your gifting, all that I need is in you, Lord. I can give thanks for that. And I can give thanks that God gave his only son. I thank God. I'm grateful that when I'm sick, there's healing there that if I learn to pray for it and know how to receive it. Yes, I know that I have a God whom I have believed and am persuaded that he will take all I've committed against him against that day. Why? Because he is a generous, loving, kind, wonderful God. Will you go through persecution? Absolutely. If you haven't, I'm sorry you haven't tasted it because it's going to be bitter when you get there. But I'll say this for you. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Give, give, keep on pressing on with gratitude, with gratitude, with gratitude, with thanksgiving. So that's how you can give thanks in all things. And, uh, you know, the second thing, you got to control your thoughts. The enemy works through your thoughts. He is constantly taking every thought captive. Our warfare is not carnal. It's a, the, it's an, it's, it is thoughts that the enemy brings against you and bombards you. You know that. And, and, and I've preached it so many times, you could probably recite it. And it said, do not look at things according to the outward appearance. If anyone's convinced in himself that he is in Christ, let him consider this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For even I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us in edification and not for your destruction. I shall not be ashamed. But he goes on to say, for our weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are my, our, our weapons are of our warfare in our carnal, but mighty in God through the pulling down of stronghold. Can't you be thankful that you can pull down a stronghold? Who, little old me, pull down a stronghold, come against the power of darkness and evil? Who, little old me? Yeah, little old you. Little old you can pull down a stronghold. It says that casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You see, your spirit is thousands of times more powerful than your mind. Thousands of times. There's more stored in your spirit because everything that God has, he's made available to you and me. It's accessing it. So when we let our mind control our behavior, we're bypassing the power and the goodness of God that he's ready to release through us. So we have to just say, I'll receive the Spirit. I won't receive that which is coming against me. I will be grateful because I have access to all that God has. His healing, His deliverance, His power, His patience, His perseverance, all the joy and peace come through the gratitude that we must have. Well, you got to control your thoughts. you got to give thanks in all things. You are either building up. Remember, I'm either building up or tearing down. Uh, you're either a contribution or a contradiction. You, t- you have your choice in what you want. You want to be a contribution, right? Yeah. Not a contradiction. Okay. Your, your beliefs create your reality. Yeah. Beliefs are in the principles of God. That's why if you believe in the principles, the principles will manifest 
because they, uh, your thoughts are, will be manifested in the reality. You got to stop negative thinking. I can say the power's in the mouth. Whatever I confess, I'll receive back. We have to be reminded of that. People, I was listening yesterday and we were waiting on a plane. I was listening to about four or five women over there and I've never heard so much gossiping in all my life. I wanted to walk over there and just say, hush. Be quiet. Shh. I didn't, but I wanted to. <laughs> but you get my point is we've got to watch our mouth. And we think, and, and I remember telling my sons when they were young, you don't raise yourself up by pulling other people down. It isn't a principle. Raise others up and God will raise you up. He said, if you want to be raised up, humble yourself. And he that humbles himself, God will raise up in due season. So it's our season. It's our time. So, but just remember, it comes out of gratitude. It comes out of gratitude. Well, I'm thankful. You know, another thing is what stops gratitude? Sin. Have you ever gotten something in your eye? What happens? You immediately go for it. I know sometimes I put a contact lens in the wrong way and it gets irritating and I can't wait to get it out immediately. That's the way you deal with sin. Once you got sin and you're aware of it, you deal with it immediately. You don't wait and think about it. You get it just like something in your eye. You want it out. You get it out what? Completely. Not just touch at it, but you remove whatever it is that's bothering you and you get it out of your eye completely and immediately and sincerely, meaning that you don't stop until it's completed. Confidently. Once you get it out, it feels so good, doesn't it? Amen. So remember, that's the way sin has to be dealt with immediately, quickly, sincerely, and get it out and immediately get forgiveness. Because that seed that the enemy's planted, and you bought it, I bought it, and I don't want it, and you don't want it, so let's get rid of it. Amen. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea to me. Okay, well, we, like I said, we've, um, we've had this relationship with Christian International for many years, 30 years. Dr. Mary was being a prophet. She was just absolutely just connected with Bishop Hammond. Many of you have heard the story. She, she was such a balanced person. If she said something was, and I had, you know, so much, she had so much credibility with me. If, if something sounded right to her, it was probably going to be all right with me. I trusted that in her, and she said that, uh, she said, well, <clears throat> she went down to Bishop Hammond's seminar, <clears throat> met him, and really related to him as a prophet, and then <clears throat> he said, well, I'm going to be in the Atlanta area, and when I do, I will call you, and you can bring your husband. I'd like to meet him to the meeting, and she told him she would, so sure enough, in about two weeks, he called and said, I'm going to be South Atlanta. And I'd like to, will y'all join us? So she asked me, she said, would you be willing to go hear the prophet? And I said, well, yeah, I guess. Where is he going to be? In South Atlanta. Oh, okay. Around Jonesboro, I guess, somewhere. <clears throat> Fayetteville, you know. She said, no, it's a little below America's Georgia. <clears throat> I said, you got to be kidding. We're going to drive down there. You know, three and a, three, three and a half hours. She said, I'll drive. <laughs> I said, well, you're going to have to because I don't think I can. I'm a little too tired. So I don't know what happened. I went to sleep and we were translated. <laughs> we ended up down there in South Georgia somehow early. You know, we were there not only on time, we were there early. Met Bishop Hammond and I got infected with the prophetic and I, I followed him around like a little puppy dog everywhere he'd go. I just was, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. He told one young man standing next to me, he said, well, there are five in your quiver, but God says there's even another one going to be in your quiver. I said, how many children you got? He said, five. I said, how did he know that? How did he tell you that? that you, he said, he didn't know that. God told him. Pressed me. 
So that began the journey. That's my point. And I'm grateful that, that was the, the Lord did that. And I still remember from that first prophecy I received from him, and that still, I still remember it and still believing. Most of it has come to pass, but there's some yet to come to pass. And after 30 years, I'm still believing that it will be completed. How many of you in here are waiting on the completion of a prophecy? You received a word from the Lord and it's not completed yet. Amen. Well, it will, don't be discouraged. It, it will be. Well, <clears throat> you know, I was, what I'm saying, we are leaving a legacy. The legacy will go on only if we together and you take it on. Now, we've been in a process, and I, you know, of, of trying to finish out, and I know a lot of folks are trying to finish the building process before the 8030. And I'm thankful for that. I appreciate that. I'm grateful for that. I would love for everything to be done and shiny and nice and We'll have people from all over the country, and we've already had so many people accept to come and be a part, and uh, Apostle John Eckhart's coming, and Chuck Pierce is coming, and past, and a, Bishop Hammond's coming, and Larry, Dr. Kefauver is coming, and Apostle John Kelly are coming. They're all coming for this event, plus many, many more. Many of the Board of Governors are coming for this event, and I want to, I want you to, you know, I want them to meet you. I want them to know you. Many of you know them because they've spoken in our church. <clears throat> but we're looking forward to this time, and we want it shiny. But if we are grateful, it means we're going to have to sacrifice some church. Amen. We're going to have to sacrifice for this one. Now, I know that I don't say that without putting my mouth where my means, where my mouth is. Dr. Mary and I have given, and we're going to continue to give. And like I say, I thought that when I left the business world, I was supposed to be poor and not have any money. Well, it came close. <laughs> but, but my point is, God, as we have sacrificed, the generous Father has continued to keep us going. He made a covenant. He said, if you give, I'll give. And I've lived on that covenant for 30 years and it's paid off. So I'm saying to you this morning, we want to finish this drive. I used to, I had a businessman came to see me about two months ago. He's one of the sons that I've raised up in the business world. Lives in South Georgia and he gets so frustrated. <clears throat> and he came to me and said, I, I, told, I went to the church, I went to the board of, of elders, and I told her, I'll give you a business. I'll run it, I won't run it, but I'll give you one of my businesses that will be enough to pay the overhead of the church. And he's, he said, they're thinking about it, praying about it. <laughs> he said, what are they praying about? I said, wait a minute, let me tell you something. I've learned this. I used to believe years ago coming out of business that if we had business in the church or the church was in business, we could produce. But I'm going to tell you something. I've changed my theory on that or my philosophy or my doctrine. Giving is a principle that God must teach us to give in order that we can receive, in order that we can build a legacy. Do I believe businessmen should build their kingdom and give out of their kingdom into the church? Absolutely. We depend upon that. But if you have everything handed to you, you won't get the faith won't be built. You won't build the faith that has to be built. My job and the pastor's job is to build your faith, raise it up, have strong faith to believe and trust God. And I've proven it over and over again that the legacy of this Life Center church and ministry will depend upon those that are willing to make the sacrifice. And I'm not ashamed to ask you to do that. There was a time when that was uncomfortable, but when I realized and looked at my own life and said, God, I have evidence in my own life that as I've sacrificed, Dr. Mary and I, you have continued to bless us and give us more seed. Come on, give me some help here a little bit. Come on. You want to leave a legacy. You may not you may not see it in your lifetime, all of it. But let me tell you, it will be accounted in heaven. And it will go on beyond you. 
That is what a legacy does. It goes beyond us. It keeps going. And the heart of, of us as the founders is that all of us together will leave a legacy that will continue to train up, teach people the power of God, the power of the gift, the principles of the Lord, the kingdom principles, and teach you how to have a joy a fulfilled life. Now it takes doing. We know that. Is if you're if you're interested in only what it, interested to do what's convenient, uh, you won't do it. If you're committed, you'll do whatever it takes. Amen. We used to have a when I was in business, used to say, you know, to build that sense of urgency. I said, if you had six frogs on a lily pad. And one decided to jump off, how many would be left? Six. Because he didn't say he jumped. He said he made a decision to jump. It's like going to the restaurant and looking at the menu. Until you place the order, it all looks good. But you got to place the order if you want to eat. I know you understand that. Now, I know you do. In other words, Paul put it this way. Good intentions won't work. Paul said, and you remember in, in, in Romans 7, 15, he said, The things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, I don't, I, I do. I think I got it right. But anyway, you get it. I want to do certain things and I don't do them. And I don't want to do certain things and I do them. In other words, my intentions are good, but my behavior is lacking. So we have to get beyond our intentions are good, but only when you step out in faith with gratitude can you receive that which God has. So that's our legacy. You want to be reproducers. You want to have your words to not fall to the ground, but to bring about the results. You have to have those things. So I want us to finish this thing up today. I want to finish it up. We need, how much we need, $100,000? We need $100,000. And you say, oh, that's a big amount of money. That's about $300 per member or less. Come on, church. Get excited with me. Leave your legacy. Come on. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, we go. If you're willing to sacrifice, I, I want you to, I want you to, if you're willing to make a commitment, a financial commitment, I want you to come down here right now and I want you to stand right here. I'm going to bless you. But if I've already made a commitment. I'm going to make another commitment. I've already given. And I thought, Lord, look how good and generous I am, Lord. And he wasn't impressed. He said, no, I want more. I want more. Come on. I want you to come on. If you, I'm not even asking you to sign your life or a pledge right today. If you want to, I receive it. But I want us to leave a legacy. If you don't think of it that way, it's not building a building. It's leaving a legacy. It's leaving something that will go way beyond you and us. We want a legacy. Come on, if you're willing to make another offering, we want to, we want to finish this thing up. We've got workers ready to finish it up. We've got materials ready to be put down. We want this floor finished. We want these bathrooms done. We want some things done. Now, I'm going to pray for the rest of you because your heart's right. Okay. But now, look, we need to finish this thing. It's not over bigger than God. God's bigger than that. He's checking us out. He's checking us out. Do you want to leave something? People will be enjoying. We, we, had, we got behind on all of our renovations, and we had to play catch up. You know the story. We've, we've announced it. We had to put a new roof, new air conditioning. And I was thinking, you know, that doesn't show up, but it has to be there. We don't need to be baptizing through our roof. <laughs> We need a good, safe roof. 
and good air conditioning. It's the what we're used to. We're kind of spoiled. But, you know, all right, now I want you to, I'm going to pray over you, and then when we get through, I want you to go back to your seat. I want you to pull out that little envelope, and I want you to put on there either a gift or a pledge that you're going to fulfill. Does that make sense? I'm going to release you into that prosperity today. All of us today. All of us. We're going to leave a legacy. You're going to hear reports. I'm going to tell you. We are at, listen, CI, as I told you, look how much they've grown. They are popping. Do what happened to the Life Center? It's about to get really great in its scope and what we're touching and the lives we're going to touch. We're going to leave a legacy. You'll be hearing testimonies and testimonies and testimonies. So we got to, you know, you're the core. You're the group. You're the legacy people, okay? You got it? If you don't got it, I'll keep preaching. <laughs> I'm going to keep on. We, I want us to take care of this thing today. Let's get it done. I, I want us to, we got places to go and things to do for the kingdom. The kingdom is right now. The kingdom is ready. The king. Listen, I haven't fulfilled my last pledge, and now I'm making another one on top of that. I, help me, Jesus. Come on. But it's what we're supposed to do. I know that God will take care of it. I know he will. He always has. I've never missed a meal that I can remember. I've never gone hungry. I still don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I know there's some tough times. I've been through some tight times like you have. But I'm going to tell you what, if I can leave something at last beyond me, it's going to be worth paying the price. I want to pay a price for the legacy that God's calling us to leave in Jesus' name. And I want all those that are on the internet and there's uh, many of you out there. I'm, come on and get in on this with us. Come on, help me finish out these, this area. Does that make sense? Come on, help us. Come on, you, you know you're part, of the, you're part of what we're doing and we're believing with you that you are also people who are kingdom changers, world changers, and you leave a legacy. Okay, get your heart right. That's a lie from the devil. Quit <laughs> drop, drop it right now. Okay, get your heart right. Get your heart right. Come on. Father, we thank you today that you are the source of all of our good things that have brought to us. You've given us life and you've given us life more abundantly. Lord, it is your desire of your heart to release even greater blessings to your people. And Lord, we come to you with a spirit of gratitude and knowing that you have been our source to bring us to this place and you want to take us further. Lord, we want to leave a legacy for Jesus Christ that his legacy will continue on. His salvation message will never stop and the prophetic word will continue on that has encouraged the others that we will demonstrate that the power of the blood of Jesus is the greater than the power of the devil that you've raised us up a touch of time is this we're declaring today victory over this house we're declaring in devil in the name of Jesus I'm telling you right now you're one defeated foe you will bow you will run you will go you will not rob you will not steal we broke the power of a, a uh, against you already and we have said the power of poverty does not exist in this house it must go now in Jesus name and the power of gratitude has its place here Lord we are grateful we are thankful we bless our neighbor and we bless ourselves but we bless you most of all and we thank you for release today in the name of Jesus we call forth release in the name of Jesus how many of you get in agreement with me this morning Come on, let's praise him. Put your hands together and give him praise. Come on and praise him. Yes. All right, I want you to go back to your, to your seat and, and get on. We're going to jump off the lily pad this morning, okay? We're going to make good intentions. Get you, get, make a decision. We want, I want the ushers to come up here and stand up here because we want to bring those pledges and money and checks and credit cards and all of those things that Pastor Samuel tells us about, the, the kiosks and the, and the credit cards and the cash and all of that, we receive it.